Well, thank you very much for coming to talk to us about uh, Liberty. Um, I wonder if you could start by, if you could tell me a bit about your background and um, how that feeds into the yeah. subject of your, your recent book. Right, uh, I'm from Zimbabwe. Uh, my name is Bettina Gapa. I've recently had a book published by, by Faber. It came out just on the 16th of April. And I come from a country that has struggled mm. with um, this question of liberty for a very long time, in, in the most obvious sense, meaning that uh, for a long time the black majority in Zimbabwe was not able to take, you know, to, to exercise any kind mm -hmm. of self-determination. And for that reason, a war of liberation, a war of liberty was, was fought uh, against the Rhodesian forces. We eventually achieved our independence in 1980, mm -hmm. but we've also had to grapple with what that independence means. Sure, yeah. yeah. And do, was there, is there a sort of a sustaining sort of moment of liberty in Zimbabwean history that you can look back on and 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 sort of use that in, a, in a, the struggles now? Well, this is the thing. I mean, the one year that we celebrate, the one day, sorry, that we celebrate every year is the 18th of April. Yeah. Because that's our mm -hmm. Independence Day, but of late it has become quite hollow. Sure, yeah. Because I can you know, while we claim to celebrate, uh, you know, our, the gaining of our liberty mm -hmm. from the Rhodesians and you know from the British, you know, because we're part of the British Empire, we have been subjected to a lot of restrictions mm -hmm. on our freedoms from the same government that claims to have liberated us. Sure, know? yes, yeah. so it's one of those horrible. Exactly ironies of, yeah. of history and uh, yeah. it happens quite a lot through history and I think one of the things you write about a lot is the sort of the psychological effects yes. of living on, in that yes. kind of region. I wonder if you could yes. talk about that. A yeah bit. Th that is actually um, a lot more disturbing I mean as you know Zimbabwe is a country that has gone through severe economic and political mm -hmm. turmoil in the last 10 years but I actually think that the more debilitating result of all of that has been this fear that people have, mm. the fear to express themselves you know, this belief that, you know, certain things can't be spoken about publicly. And as a result, people don't really trust each other, even within families, you know. Mm. My mother always says to me when I go to Zimbabwe that I should be careful who I talk to. Yeah. So th there's this self-censorship self mm. that goes on quite a lot in, in people. And I think that is the most sort of severe psychological impact that, you know, living in Zimbabwe in the last 10 years has had on people. Yeah, I think it's almost unimaginable for us here. Mm. We, we take our liberty a lot for granted, and yeah. although we have debates about our own particular sort of brand of liberty, we don't. We, we, there's no way yeah. we, we've kind of experienced yeah. that level. You of know, imagine what it must have been like living under the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah, and then you just generally you just really like black cats. Yeah. And you you say you can't really say oh I actually think black cats are rather cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of your neighbours might be listening and you know report yeah. you to the authorities or, or something. Like that. It's a little bit like that. It's a kind of topsy turvy world, I exactly. guess. It's, and yeah. in the sort of the modern world, you, you know, we know what freedom is. You know, yeah. the Zimbabweans, I guess, you know, you'd know a lot more about this. That you, you know what freedom is, and it's. It's, uh, it's much harder that you know it's a mm. few miles across mm. the border or, or on yeah. the internet or something that's very yeah. immediate, that, but in your own sort of yeah. world it's yeah. so kind of constrained. Yes, exactly. And it is constrained because there's a perception, there's a belief that has been propagated by the government that liberty is what the government wants it mm. to mean. You know, you are free to think what the government believes and what the government says is true. Beyond those narrowly defined parameters, you can't. See, yeah. Go, you can't go. Yeah. Know, so, yeah. so it's a sort of complete tyranny. Exactly. Over your sort of your, your very, yeah, even in private your yeah. discussions, yeah. which yeah. I think it's you know it's it's, it's, a, it's a blot in the world really. I yeah. can see you know that Zimbabwe is a is a byword for the kind of survival of that kind of sort of crushing tyranny that exactly. was yeah. you know it was you know it was in, until fairly recently it was quite prevalent in East Europe and yeah. Russia. And I think it, it survives as. In, in, mm. you know, in the most mm. possible way. And, and it's, it's interesting that you mention Eastern Europe and Russia because of course our liberators, you know, Mugabe, the ruling uh, party, Zanupia, the former ruling party I should say, they were very much inspired by, you know, uh, Marxism mm. and, you know, communism. When when I was a, a schoolgirl, we learned a lot of Chinese history. Right. But, you know, we sort of learned that Mao was a really good guy, you know. Yeah. And we learned a lot of uh, Russian history as well, you know. Yeah. And we, we were, uh, we, we also had very good relationships with Tito before mm -hmm. he died, mm -hmm. and then Shishesku, 
yeah, came all, visiting. All kind of. <laughs> you know, the, you know it, it really just uh, there was a lot of influence from Eastern Europe. Yeah. And I think part of the problem in Zimbabwe is that uh, this totalitarian control um, is something that uh, that became almost uh, an, an inevitable element of, of government. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a we had this one party project in the nineties when ZANU-PF was trying to create a one party state, and effectively for a very long time until nineteen ninety nine when the MDC was then formed. We were a one-party state. Mm. If not in law, then it certainly in fact. In fact, yeah. yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's it's, um, it's it's interesting to hear how much you know the history and sort of the history of other countries is very propagandistic. Yes. It kind of feeds into you know Mugabe's sort of brand of tyranny is, is yeah. learned elsewhere. It's yeah. almost contagious. And you know, there's there's an interesting thing going on right now. There's a there's not a lot of writing within Zimbabwe mm. where criticizing the government. But there's a lot of writing lauding the government, right. and praising the land reform yeah. program. It's a kind of writing that uh, one of the academics has called state fiction. Right. You know, yeah. it's sort of like uh, you know, it has a stamp of approval of the government because it happens to you know tell the government story. It is pure propaganda. Mm. You know? mm. yeah. yeah, and that must be quite. I mean, it must be quite horrible to sort of read that, have that thrown in your face all the time. Well, as well, a, as a, or does it become a kind of? It becomes so praiseworthy of leaders you hate that it becomes almost funny in Well, this is the thing, I mean, the state paper, the, the daily newspaper, the Herald, um, which was the only daily newspaper uh, for, for a very long time, it, it, the propaganda is just so naked and it's mm. so blatant. And it would be, I mean, if it was just a little bit readable, it might be a little bit better, <laughs> but it's so badly written. And just like the state fiction, it's just really poor writing. Yeah, it's kind of deadening on the spirits. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's, I, I think in that way, countries that are repressive, do you find that are there sort of glimmers of um, creativity and and spontaneity or, or do they sort of fall victim to the, the same kind of well, I mean, political if, pressures? If you, you create something um, on the basis of certain parameters, it can't be that spontaneous mm. or that creative and sure. usually it's really not that good and and this is certainly the thing that has happened in, in the world today. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of creativity in the theatre. Mm. You know, very many uh, playwrights are writing play, plays that are critical of the government, but they perform for one night and then they're shut down. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've had a lot of that. Yeah.